Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining. We'll get started here in just a couple minutes while we wait for a few more people to join. While we're waiting, um, pull up the chat window on the bottom of the Zoom bar there. If you have any questions, then I'll watch the chat window. We'll get them answered while we're going through the presentation. So I'm located here in central Canada, uh, just north of Winnipeg. So Winnipeg is halfway between Toronto and Vancouver, about eight hours north of Minneapolis. So let me know where you're calling in from as well. I'll just work to get my screen shared here. So we're ready to go right at top here. So you should be able to see my screen. And thanks for joining. I wasn't sure if uh, today would be a holiday being Friday before Easter. So appreciate you taking the time to join. Hi, Anthony, not too far away in Winnipeg, um, and it's not too cold, so enjoy the weather. All right, so we're right at the top of the hour. Let's get started. So today's presentation is on commissioning project management. Uh, you're going to learn how to get the people, processes, and tools that you need for capital project commissioning. And this is going to be the industry best approach to completing capital projects that we're going to go through here today. So I started out applying these advanced commissioning principles in the aerospace industry, building satellites and rockets for the Canadian Space Agency here in Manitoba and in Montreal. I then used the same approach to commissioning in the power industry, building hydroelectric generation projects in northern Manitoba, as well as HVDC transmission projects here as well, applying these processes to the power industry. I then applied the same approach to commissioning in the water treatment industry, where we've been expanding and upgrading a wastewater treatment plant facility not too far away from here. I'm also on the organizing committee of the Commissioning Professional Society, where we host an annual event in Houston to have some of the best and brightest commissioning minds all in one room to discuss the challenges that are being faced with the commissioning industry and how to elevate the importance of commissioning on projects. It's a great event. At Commissioning Expert Solutions, we help project teams get the people, processes, and tools that they need for commissioning with standardized processes for commissioning using top-rated commissioning software that's available on the market and onboarding programs to help people build out their commissioning teams so they can ultimately complete commissioning as efficiently as possible. And I'm going to show you how to do this same approach on your projects here today. We've helped over 200 people with commissioning of their projects. For example, Sheldon or Jonald or Kale and many others, after working with us, they all tell me the same. This was an eye-opener. They had no idea everything that was truly involved in completing commissioning. They tell me that this was the first commissioning process they've found that fully matches with what really happens at site. And that's because it is. It's based on real-world experience. And after working with us, they all tell me that they were originally not have any, any success filling their positions for commissioning that they needed to uh, onboard to their projects. And now they have a steady pipeline of people to build their project teams. And you can go to our site at commissioningandstartup.com. At the top, you can read all the success stories that people are having with our help on projects. So everyone's saying these methods are great. They're helping a lot of people on projects, and they can definitely help you on your projects too. Just to be clear, though, this is not technical commissioning. If you're looking for how to commission a 230 kV switch yard, or you're looking for specific flushing standards for food grade piping, or how to do an electrical high pot test, you're not going to get any of that here. That's not what this presentation is about. But technical commissioning is only one part of what's required for commissioning, right? As you know, there's more to commissioning than just testing everything at the end of projects. The three month fundamental aspects required for project commissioning are people, processes, and tools. And this is not new. You already know this. Projects 
have always required people, processes, and tools to get the job done, and they always will require all three of these elements to be successful. If you're missing even just one of these, or one of them is not working well, then commissioning will always be a struggle on projects. You need the right tools to get the job done, right? You could try to dig a ditch with a shovel, and sure, you'll get it done eventually, but it's going to take you a lot longer when you know you could have used a backhoe to get the job done quicker. You can try to complete commissioning without following any process, but you'll get poor quality at the end of your project. And you can try to complete projects without people, but I've never seen that work. Artificial intelligent and isn't replacing people anytime soon on projects. So it's fundamental to have all three of these things on projects, people, processes, and tools, if you want to successfully complete commissioning. When you have people and processes, but are using the wrong software for commissioning, or worse, still using spreadsheets, then you're relying entirely on your people to implement a process. And with no tool to manage commissioning, then you'll always get variability in the success of your projects at the end based on how well all groups on your projects understand the commissioning process. When you have people and tools, but no processes defined in software, then there's really no clarity on what's required for commissioning. And when everyone has a different idea of what's required at the end of projects, it's super hard to complete projects when everyone's going in different directions. And when you have processes and tools, but no people to do the work, well, as you know, it's pretty difficult to make progress. I haven't found a way to complete projects without the right people to do the work. Without having robust systems to complete projects, it's difficult to attract and retain the people that you need. It's just not an efficient way to onboard new people to your projects when you don't have well-defined processes for them to learn and follow. And a trap that a lot of people fall into is thinking that spreadsheets are a process for commissioning. It's not anyone's fault for thinking this. It's just that this is the way it's always been done for decades. And people are familiar with Excel, right? It's on our computers and it's easy to use and people are familiar with it. Uh, it's just difficult to break free from these industry norms that have been this way for a long time. So this presentation is for project teams that need a new way to get skilled resources for commissioning, for project managers that want a consistent method to complete capital projects during commissioning, and for organizations that want better certainty to meet their project cost and schedule objectives. But before we talk about how to get people for commissioning, we need to discuss what's required for the processes and the tools because you need a rock solid process and tools for commissioning before you can add more people to your projects. Without a structured process to complete commissioning, project teams are just gambling. There's no way to get consistent results for projects. And as long as you're relying on people to manually track commissioning and spreadsheets, your outcome is always going to vary on projects. With no standardized way to complete projects, it's the wild west and all you can do is roll the dice and see what happens at the end. And I'm sure you've had this experience on projects where some projects go extremely well during commissioning because all the people had a very good understanding of commissioning and other projects were very difficult to complete because there was just so much missing and people didn't understand commissioning and there was no structured process to help some of these other groups understand how to get through the commissioning process. I want to share some statistics with you that are quite concerning. This is Professor Bent Flivberg. He's from the University of Oxford. And what he's done is he's compiled a database of over 16,000 projects from the last several decades. He's also written a book. It's called how Big Things Get Done, and if you haven't read it, it's a good book. It talks about lots of challenges in the construction industry. Professor Flivberg's research shows that only 8.5% of projects are on time and on budget. That means that 9 out of 10 projects are late and over budget. That's not really good for the construction industry. Lack of skilled resources is one of the main contributing factors to delays on projects when there's no structured approach to commissioning. Today, I'm going to show you what successful project teams are doing to get the people, processes, and tools that they need so that commissioning can be successful. 
Let's address the problems of what not to do for commissioning before we talk about what to do. We know that projects are having problems. The data tells us this, that nine out of 10 projects are late and over budget. People are struggling to find skilled labor that they need for commissioning. They're losing time during commissioning and missing their project in service dates. But why is this? Why are projects struggling to complete commissioning? We need to address these problems before I show you what to do. There's two common mistakes that are made on projects, and just by fixing these two common mistakes, projects can see huge improvements on their outcomes at the end during commissioning. So what are these two mistakes? <clears throat> the first common mistake is leaving commissioning to the end of projects. <clears throat> We've been told for many decades that commissioning takes place at the end of projects, right? We need to finish construction and then we'll test everything at the end. But this is actually not true. This is what a lot of projects do is they start to think about commissioning a few months before on-site testing starts. But this is what leads to problems on projects. In fact, to be successful, your commissioning processes need to start during your feed processes once equipment tag lists are available. Your project WBS rarely aligns with your commissioning and startup sequence, and you need to realign your project with a systems-based approach early in your projects before the damage is done on your projects. If you don't get this right earlier in your projects, then it's pretty tough to fix later, and it's a lot more expensive to fix mistakes at the end of projects than to get things set up properly right from the start. <clears throat> It's exactly like Stephen Covey says in his book, Seven Habits of Highly Successful People. Habit number two is to begin with the end in mind. And this is how capital projects must begin, with the end of your project during commissioning in mind. All project groups must have a clear vision of what success looks like during commissioning, starting right at the beginning of projects. And the only way to do that is by defining all your commissioning processes early in projects in a way for all people to easily understand them, regardless of their understanding of commissioning. There's just no way to successfully complete complex projects unless all groups start with the end in mind. And it's like that for everything. Projects are no different, right? You wouldn't go on a road trip without first determining where you're going to go, what your destination is. Of course not. You're going to figure out the details of your destination, how you're going to get there, and where you're going to stay before you jump in the car. Your commissioning systems and processes must be established early in projects so that everyone knows the details of where the project is going and how their role contributes to success during commissioning. <clears throat> Mistake number two, a lot of projects are still using paper and spreadsheets. And in today's information age, spreadsheets just don't cut it. While spreadsheets used to work 20 years ago, and a lot of projects are still doing this because it's the way it's always been done, projects are just far too complex. There's just too many documents and too much information, and it's impossible to keep track of everything manually in Excel. And it's not possible to onboard new people to your project team when you don't have a standardized method to complete projects that's easy for them to understand. And besides, maybe you understand what's being tracked in spreadsheets and they help you complete commissioning, but others on your projects certainly don't understand what's in your spreadsheets and new people to your team can't easily understand the processes to follow. And if you ask anyone else on your project, they all have a different understanding of what's required for commissioning. Spreadsheets may be fine as a tracking list to track a bunch of things to do, but they're terrible as a tool to manage a process. And when others don't have a clear understanding of the process to follow, there's a low probability that you get what you need for commissioning. Besides, projects move pretty fast and manual tracking in spreadsheets just can't keep up. During on-site testing, we need real-time data to make informed decisions and we can't wait until Friday's spreadsheet update to get the status of where everything's at. We need access to information now so we can make real-time decisions. Successful project teams are no longer using paper and spreadsheets, and I'll show you what they're using. When projects don't have well-defined commissioning processes that are defined in software and used to manage the process on a day-to-day -day basis, then there's no way to show everyone how to get to the end of your project. We need more collaboration 
on projects for commissioning. So project teams can work together and solve problems together. But when only a few people understand what's in spreadsheets for commissioning, then it's pretty tough to collaborate. And when new people join your commissioning team, there's no easy way for them to learn your process other than trial and error to try and figure it out on the fly in the field. Spreadsheets for commissioning are not a great tool for collaboration and are not useful for onboarding new team members to your project. When everyone has a different understanding of what's required for commissioning, it's super difficult to complete project when everyone's going in different directions. With no clear view of commissioning, project teams spend more time talking about the work rather than actually getting the work done. And we don't need more meetings. We need a better way to organize our teams so we can complete projects more efficiently during commissioning and collaborate better during all phases of projects. <clears throat> When project teams make one or more of these mistakes, when they leave commissioning to the end or they're using outdated tools for commissioning, we call this cowboy commissioning. And cowboy commissioning results in inconsistent completions, missed deadlines, and delays during commissioning that are very expensive to fix at the end. Cowboy commissioning is not attracting new people to the industry. In fact, it's driving them away. And it's impossible to onboard new people to your team when you have no consistent method for them to follow. Throwing them out into the field for them to learn on the fly is not a strategy to grow and expand your team. Let me know in the chat if this is making sense, if you've had any of these experiences on projects. So these are the two most common mistakes on projects. And these are the two main reasons for problems during commissioning. If you fix just these two things by replacing spreadsheets and by getting commissioning processes established early in your projects, you'll make huge improvements on your projects to complete commissioning as efficiently as possible and have a much better strategy to get the people, processes, and tools that you need for commissioning. All right, so first let's look at the software systems that are needed to be used on projects that replace spreadsheet processes. There's over 25 different software platforms to choose from, and there's, there's several good options on this list to choose from. Now, we don't make software, and none of the software on this list is ours. Instead, what we've done is we've compiled the list of all the options that are available, and we've taken a look at several of these options that are in this list to know which ones are the best to use. What I'll do is I'll send you a copy of this list after this presentation so you can review it more closely and see the options that are available. And then once you've had a chance to review, we can discuss which one might be a good fit for you and your projects. So what do these software systems allow you to do? The first thing is they allow you to standardize your commissioning processes. When you're using spreadsheets and different people are managing commissioning, then it's random every time, right? Everybody's going to have a different way that they manage commissioning and different processes that they follow. And it's tough to get consistency. With Without that consistency, then each project will have a variable outcome at the end. And that's why we see some projects go well and some projects not go well. When you implement software, you're able to standardize your commissioning workflows. You're able to use the same checklists across multiple projects, which, which saves a lot of work and makes it very easier for people to understand the processes to follow when they're familiar with the same templates and much easier to move people from project to project uh, since they expect the same methods to complete on each one. It's the most effective way to manage resources on projects. When you're able to standardize your workflows, you're able to get much better consistency from projects because the reality is we're always going to be working with a lot of different groups on projects, right? And we need a consistent way to get to what, what's required for commissioning, even though each group that we're working with is going to have a different understanding um, and level of experience with commissioning. It's the only way to get consistency is with standardized processes that are managed in software. Our old and wise commissioning experts are going to retire. It seems like some of them maybe want to work forever, but they will retire at some point. And it's often the case that how you do commissioning resides within the expertise of one or two of these people. And when they retire, your commissioning processes are all going to leave with them. The way to transfer this expertise to younger generations is to build out these workflows within software systems have the checklist to use and the steps to follow that our wise commissioning experts are showing us to do. And these need to be defined in software that others can easily use and understand. 
your spreadsheet tracking list just can't do this. And writing a document that nobody will read or understand is not effective either. Your workflows defined in software are much easier for people to follow on a daily basis when they're defined in a tool that they're working with daily. And another reason to have standardized commissioning processes is it's much easier to onboard new team members to your commissioning team. As you know, people with commissioning experience are getting harder and harder to find. And since there's just so much work to complete on projects, it's extremely competitive to attract the skilled resources that you need. However, there are people with strong technical backgrounds that are already working on projects and can apply their technical expertise to commissioning. They just need to understand the commissioning process. When you have standardized your commissioning processes, it's much easier to onboard these new team members to your project teams to how you do commissioning on your projects. When you have no standardized processes, though, it's difficult or almost impractical to bring new people to your team because it takes them years to understand your commissioning process and years before they can contribute value to your commissioning efforts. So there's lots of advantages to getting these software systems set up on your projects, and it can certainly be an iterative, iterative process to fully integrate these systems into your project delivery strategies, starting maybe with a smaller project and then seeing how that goes, and then rolling it out to additional projects in your organization as you refine your processes and are ready to grow and expand with some of these new processes. So that commissioning continues to get more efficient the more times that you do this, and it gets easier to onboard new people to your project team each time. Now, these software systems are all cloud-based systems. And something I often hear is that your IT department just isn't going to allow it. Software needs to be part of your IT network. When you get the right system, these are all built on the most secure data networks in the world. The big data companies like Amazon and Google that have teams of thousands of people implementing the most advanced security tech technology available, they have much more secure systems than your IT department of four can put together. So the security of these systems is really not an issue if you get the right ones because they're, they're very secure and will protect your data. One thing to note, software is certainly a big piece of the equation to finish projects. It's just not the biggest piece. Completing projects during commissioning is not fundamentally about software. Software is a tool used to complete your projects. What determines your success with these software systems is how you apply each one to your project specific circumstances and your workflows within them. We see a lot of project teams using their software incorrectly and I don't want you to fall into this trap, which is why we help project teams get these systems set up correctly so they can get the best value from them and actually use them to help complete projects. So I'll send you a copy of this list after the presentation so you can take a look and review it a bit further. Okay, so the second fundamental part of projects are the commissioning processes implemented within your software. And you may be familiar with a lot of these, so I won't go through it in detail. Again, I'll send you a copy of this uh, process flowchart after the presentation, and you can take a look a little bit closer afterwards if there are any workflows maybe that you're not familiar with, or make sure that you're not missing any of these workflows within your commissioning processes. The software we just discussed is what models these commissioning workflows within the software specific to how you do your work because everybody's going to do commissioning slightly differently in their application to their specific projects and industries, right? So you need to have the software set up and model your specific workflows within that software. If you're using software just as a tracking tool, then you're not really getting much value from it. And you need to investigate an alternate system that actually allows you to manage the workflows that are on the screen. When you model these workflows properly in software, it becomes essentially your work management tool to guide everyone through each stage of your gated commissioning workflows, regardless of their level of understanding of commissioning. You and your team are able to have full visibility and clarity at each stage of your commissioning process so everyone knows what the next step is and so that nothing gets missed. 
I'll send you a copy of this flowchart. Um, watch your email. You'll get a link to it so you can review it a bit further and make sure that you're not missing anything in your commissioning workflows. There are certainly lots of pieces to the commissioning puzzle on projects and spreadsheets just can't manage this level of detail. So if you're still using spreadsheets or you're using the wrong software, it means one of two things. It means either you're doing all of this by brute force and trying to manually manage your commissioning workflows and relying entirely on your people to implement your commissioning processes, or it means you're missing some or all of these workflows on projects and neither situation is good. Not good for you and your project team because you're burning out a lot of good people by relying on brute force to manage your commissioning workflows and not good for your projects because you're leaving all of your risk to the end of your project, which inevitably causes delays during commissioning when it's a lot more expensive to fix issues at the end. And the third fundamental part of projects is people, of course. I'm sure you're well aware of the huge volume of projects uh, work that's ahead of us and the labor shortages that we're facing. It's getting harder and harder to find experienced commissioning people because the good guys are already busy working on other projects and they're not responding to job postings because they're busy. There's just an unprecedented amount of work to complete on projects for electrification, for decarbonization, and all the climate change initiatives that we're undertaking, and not nearly enough skilled people that understand commissioning to actually get the work done. On top of this, like we mentioned, our old and wise commissioning experts are retiring at a higher rate. And when they do, they're taking all their knowledge and expertise with them, which means you can't rely on one or two people to implement your commissioning processes like you have in the past. You need to capture this knowledge in systems and processes before it disappears. If we allow these skill sets to leave the industry without having systems to guide others on the commissioning process, it's going to be pretty difficult to build these skills back up later. It's, it's just difficult to attract the skilled labor that you need when you're using old methods for commissioning. The younger generation that's joining projects, they have their phone in hand and they're expecting technology to make their jobs easier. Then there's just so much project work. They've got options that they'll just go down the streets and work on another project that is using more advanced methods for commissioning that's actually making their jobs easier. So if you want to grow and expand and take on more projects while competing for skilled labor, new and modern processes to complete commissioning give you a significant advantage. Once you have a consistent method to complete projects with standardized systems and processes, then onboarding new team members becomes much more effective. A new way to onboard people to your commissioning team is required to get the commissioning resources you need because it's just getting so difficult to find experienced commissioning people, which is why we offer onboarding training to help your new and existing team members understand the commissioning process. Putting people in the field to learn on the fly is not a, a very good method to help people understand a complex topic like commissioning. You need a new way to build and grow your commissioning team if you wanna get the commissioning resources that you need for your projects. We often hear that people are putting out job postings, looking for someone with, say, 10 or 20 years of commissioning experience, and they're not getting the response they would like on these job postings at all. The good guys are already busy on projects, and they're not responding to job postings. And maybe you've had this experience. It's it's very difficult to find experienced commissioning people. It's, it's almost like you're searching for a unicorn, right? They don't exist. However, people with strong technical backgrounds and years of project experience, these people do exist. They're currently working on projects. They're electrical or mechanical engineers working on the design side of projects, or they're electrical or mechanical techs working on the construction side of projects and many other disciplines as well. They're working in operations or elsewhere, and they've got years of valuable project experience. These are smart people with five to 10 years of hands-on practical project experience. They just need a path to apply their technical skills to commissioning. When you implement a program to attract and hire these people with job descriptions that we can provide to you if needed, you get a custom onboarding program to show these people how to apply their technical skills 
within your commissioning process, which quickly allows you to integrate these new people into your commissioning team so they can start contributing to your projects much, much sooner. So one thing I do want to clarify that I often get asked is you can't teach technical commissioning in a course, right? That's not what this is. Nobody's going to offer a course to teach someone how to start up a 230 kV transformer in a course. It's just too dangerous. That's that's not what this is. But you can and you need to show people the commissioning process, the stages of commissioning and what takes place during each stage and how they can apply the technical skills that they already have to your commissioning team within this commissioning process. This is the piece that's missing in the industry. The stepping stone to help these technical people that are already working on projects apply their skills to commissioning. And it's the reason it's getting harder and harder to find commissioning people with this missing piece. The project teams that are having success are the ones that are implementing an onboarding program just like this to generate the commissioning skill sets they require on projects rather than searching for a needle in a haystack with fingers crossed searching for that ideal candidate that just doesn't exist. The quick fix to hire the unicorn commissioning expert that you'd love to have just doesn't exist anymore. And the project teams that are still using this approach are the groups that continue to struggle with commissioning. We give you an efficient and reliable method to get a consistent pipeline of new commissioning resources whose technical skills you can onboard to your commissioning team with a solid understanding of the commissioning process. It's not reasonable to keep putting out job postings and hoping to find the unicorns that are out there because that hasn't been effective so far, has it? Instead, we're helping project teams implement an onboarding program to grow their commissioning teams with the systems and processes to back them up for commissioning success. The project groups that are not implementing a program like this will not be in a good position in 10 years from now after all our experts have retired. While the project teams that are implementing these programs, they're the ones that are setting themselves up for success now and in the future. So with everything we've discussed today, I'm sure you see the value in getting this implemented on your projects to implement commissioning software, to standardize your commissioning processes, and to onboard new resources to your commissioning team. The question is then, what's your next step to get this done? What are you going to do on Monday to get the people and processes and tools that you need to set your projects up for commissioning success? You can do this on your own. You can make this transformation on your own to upgrade your systems and processes and develop your own on onboarding program. And maybe it takes you a year or two to complete that. And this is a totally legitimate way to go. This is what I did over the last several years is uh, work on several projects to try and figure this out and find out what works. You can try some of these software systems and see which ones work well and experiment with which ones can accommodate your workflows. You can work with your HR group uh, who knows nothing about commissioning and try to develop an onboarding program to bring new people to your commissioning team. And maybe you'll get the people processes and tools on your own over the next couple of years. Or maybe you'll still be working with what you currently have and still struggling to complete project commissioning. Or you can get it all right now and get the people, processes, and tools that you need in only a matter of weeks to start onboarding new people to your commissioning team with industry-leading commissioning methods for them to use right away. You can remo remove the constraints you're having with commissioning and fix any gaps that you have if you need more people, if you need to standardize your processes, or if you need to implement better software we have a solution for you to fix any of these three fundamental aspects that are needed for commissioning. If you've got well-defined processes and software tools to manage commissioning, but you need more people to join your commissioning team, we've got a solution to onboard skilled commissioning resources to your team. If you're happy with your software and you've got great people, but you're not getting the results that you want out of your commissioning processes, well, we've got a solution to standardize your commissioning processes. If you've got great people and commissioning processes that are working really well, but you need a better system to manage your processes, well, we've got a solution for you to get top rated commissioning software for your projects. Or maybe you're just starting out on a project or setting up a new department. We've got a solution to set you up with all three of these, the people and the processes and the tools that you need, so you're ready for commissioning success. 
We understand the challenges of commissioning. Getting skilled people for commissioning is definitely a challenge. Getting the right software to manage your commissioning can be daunting sometimes. And standardized processes so your team has robust methods to follow during the complex stage of commissioning. We've got a solution for you to make your commissioning much easier on projects. So the next step is for you to see how this applies to your projects and how this helps you complete commissioning. You can book a free consultation on our website when you go to commissioningandstartup.com. In the menu under solutions, click on that. And at the bottom, you'll see uh, in that red circle for a free consultation. Once you click this link, answer a few questions about your projects. Then on the next page, select a time to meet for your free consultation. I'll send you a Microsoft Teams link for the meeting invite that you can join at the date and time that you selected. During the call, we'll review the people, the processes, and the tools that you currently have in place for commissioning and how to fix any of the problems that you might be having with one or more of these. We're focused on removing the challenges with commissioning one project at a time, because if you don't remove the constraints that you're dealing with now, commissioning will always be a struggle to complete on projects now and in the future. So go to commissioningandstartup.com and book your free consultation right now. This is perfect for companies that need to standardize and streamline commissioning with new systems and processes, but just haven't been able to get it done over the last few years. Maybe you've, you've thought about it, but projects are busy and it's just not getting done. Well, this is perfect for companies that need to take that leap and, and uh, make this transformation. And perfect for groups that need to onboard new or existing team members to commissioning with the huge volume of project work that's ahead of us. Lots of project teams are growing and expanding and need a new way to onboard new team members to their commissioning team so they can handle this volume of work. If you're setting up a new project or a new department and want to get started in the right direction, then this is a perfect option for you as well. Our services make it easy to address the problems you're having with commissioning with custom solutions that meet your exact project needs. So if you're serious about commissioning and want to get the people, processes, and tools that you need for commissioning, then we've got a solution to address your needs. Now, it's very common that you may need to discuss this with others. That's very common on projects when you're working in a team environment. So you can book a call and we can meet before you discuss with others if you like. That way I can get you all the information that you need so that you can then take that and go discuss, discuss with others. Or if you prefer, you can book a call and invite others to that same call and we can all discuss together to answer everyone's questions that they might have about how this works on their projects, whichever you prefer. Either way, go to commissioningandstartup.com right away and book your free consultation. What I can tell you is that you'll literally change the entire trajectory of your projects when you have a consistent method to complete commissioning and the skilled resources to get the work done. Because when everyone has a clear understanding of what's required for commissioning, everyone can work together, solve problems together, and all contribute to the success of commissioning together. And that's what we need on projects is more collaboration, more teamwork to address these complex challenges that were faced on projects. So if you want to set your capital projects up for commissioning success, book your free consultation at commissioningandstartup.com and we'll discuss the right solution that meets your project needs. Okay. That's the end of the presentation for today. We do have some more time for additional Q&A. So please ask any questions that you have in the chat. And while you do that, there's typically some very common questions I get at this point in, in the presentation. So I'll just run through those. That'll give you a chance to add any questions you have in the chat and uh, I'll get them answered. So often at this point, people ask, well, why do I need commissioning software? Our spreadsheets have been working just fine for us. Well, without a system or without standardized processes, then you're relying 100% on your people to get the job done. And that's only going to get you so far, right? Because like we discussed, the good commissioning people are just not available or they're retiring. And when they do retire or move on to other projects, then you've got nothing except for your outdated spreadsheets 
if if you want to capture this knowledge and transfer it to the younger generations, then don't write a document because nobody's going to read that and nobody's going to understand that. What's a better, more effective method is to build your processes right into the software tools that people are already using on a daily basis. That way they don't have to read a document and then try to apply that to the real world in a practical way on site. The processes are already built into the tools that they're using on a daily basis. So if you wanna grow and expand and take on more projects, then you can't rely entirely on your people. You need systems and processes to back them up and be able to bring new people to your project team. It's the only way to survive in this complex industry with the challenges that were faced on a daily basis on construction projects and with commissioning. So another project, uh, another question I often get is, why do I need different processes to manage commissioning? We've been managing commissioning just fine for years. Well, you don't actually need new processes. We want you to continue with your way of commissioning that's working well for you. But when your commissioning processes reside within one or two of your commissioning experts or in a document that nobody reads, then others can't easily understand what's required for commissioning. And I believe when more people can see what's required for commissioning without needing to be an expert at commissioning, then everyone on projects is able to contribute to the success of commissioning rather than leaving this all to the end for the poor commissioning guys to scramble and try and figure out and make sense of. It's just that you need to build your commissioning processes into a tool for everyone to see in a way that's easy for them to understand, regardless of their understanding of commissioning, because it's not reasonable for us to expect that everybody's going to be an expert in commissioning. That's just not going to happen. Everybody's got their own area of expertise, and we need them to focus on that area of expertise. When only a few of your commissioning experts know what's required for commissioning, it's very difficult for others to learn and collaborate on projects and to work together to solve problems together and help projects succeed during commissioning. People sometimes ask, well, do these commissioning systems and processes apply to all industries? And I like to answer this question with some more questions. So do you have mechanical equipment on your projects, pipes, pumps, and motors? Yes, most projects do. Do you have electrical equipment on your projects, switch gear, MCCs, transformers? Yes. All projects require some sort of power. Do you have automation equipment to monitor and control all of these electrical mechanical items? Yes. Everything on projects seems to be more automated and more interconnected these days. Does all of this equipment need to work together as one plant process? Yes. That's why the project was started in the first place. Then why would it matter what's in the pipes? If it's oil or wastewater or chocolate sauce, the process to make all this stuff work together is the same regardless of what's in the pipes, regardless if it's an electrical process or a mechanical process. And if project teams aren't following industry best processes for commissioning, then that's probably the reason they're having problems with commissioning and the reason they're not able to get the skilled resources that they need on projects. Remember, there is a distinction between technical commissioning and commissioning project management. Technical commissioning is always different on all projects, in all industries. The breakers to close and the valves to open, these will always be specific to each project, even two projects within the same industry. But the same project management risk-based approach to commissioning is required for all industries for commissioning to be successful. So regardless of the type of project, the industry, um, we need to be using the same standardized process um, on all projects. And this is what we help project teams implement applied to all industries, all industrial plant systems. And another common question I get is, well, this all sounds good, but can I do this later? Um, I'm busy. I don't have time. Um, I'm busy on my project, or maybe it's too early for commissioning on my project. And I, I totally get it. Project life is busy. Your days on site are very fast paced, but that's why we're here to help you because we know that you're busy and we want to make it easier for people to get uh, these people, processes, and tools that are required for commissioning so project teams can do their best work 
and before the damage is already done on projects. So if your project has already started, then it's already time to get these systems and processes set up and start onboarding new people to your project team. So don't miss your chance. Get the people, processes, and tools in place now before it's too late and there's nothing that you can do to fix it. You need to get some urgent items in place now if you want commissioning to go well later. So when you book your free consultation, we'll review your project to see if you're missing any of the people, processes, or tools that you require for commissioning that could be extremely expensive to fix later. All right. So those are a lot of the common questions that I get. I'm not seeing any more questions in the chat, so let's leave it there for today. Go to commissioningandstartup.com and book your free consultation to get the people, processes and the tools that you need to set your project up for commissioning success. Watch your email. Um, I will send you the links that we've discussed today, including a link to this replay. Um, um, when you get that link, feel free to share it with others that might benefit from hearing about commissioning. I'll send you a link to the software list that we discussed so you can review some of the software options that are available on the market. And I'll send you a link to the commissioning process flowchart that we reviewed so you can make sure you're not missing any of the workflows that are listed there. I'll also send you the link that you see on the screen so you can book your free consultation so you can get the people, processes, and tools that you need for your commissioning success as well. So I want to thank everybody for joining um, and I look forward to chatting with you soon. Have a great day, everyone.